It was a challenge catching up with John Vanderkall for the Blue Coats. As artistic director and visual designer, John has been leading the way in Canton since 2013. The Canadian-born Vanderkolf marched with the cadets in the mid-80s and learned from maestro George Zingali. From there, he would also work with Santa Clara, Madison, and when Bill Cook took Star of Indiana and made it into a stage show that resulted in Blast, John was a big part in making that happen. John Vanderkolf has been aptly called a creative force in our activity. Hi, my name is John Vanderkolf, and I'd like to thank Drum Corps International, the members of the Hall of Fame, Denise Bonfaglio, Jeff Saptic, and Jay Murphy for nominating me to this prestigious group. I'd also like to congratulate my classmates, Gordon Henderson, Scott Burma, and the late, great Mike Duffy. What an amazing group of people who have done so much for activity. I'm humbled to be included with you. I was pretty much born into Drum Corps. Some of my earliest memories were as a mascot for the Dutch boy cadets where my father was an instructor and my brother was a drum major. I also remember the very first DCI in 1972, hanging on the fence in white water in the pouring rain watching the Blue Stars and uh, the Santa Clara Vanguard and the St. Andrews Bridgman. I don't know why I remember those groups, but they stuck out in my mind. This is the time when, uh, when eight tracks were a thing. My dad would buy all the eight tracks from DCI and I would memorize Santa Clara's show, and such to the point where I would walk home from school conducting the entire thing from memory, and my neighbor, Miss Kelly, would call my mom saying, something's seriously wrong with John. To this point, I was hooked, for sure. That same year, in 1972, my mother and father, Peter and Louise, started the Ventures All-Girl Drum Corps, one of the most decorated all-girl corps of DCI. With them, I traveled all over Canada and America up until my teens. The thing I especially remember about this time was my dad had a pegboard of a football field, and I would spend hours on hours creating designs and staging and imitating what he would do with these colored pegs. A big thank you to the people from this part of my life, including Bill Renault, Jackie Renault, Pam Monk, Terry Leslie, Mary Beth Detzler, and so many more, had a huge influence on the rest of my life. I began performing drum corps with the Kiwanis Cavaliers, and then eventually moved on to the Garfield Cadets in 85 to 87. I have no idea how I actually made that drum corps as I was so bad at my audition. But I remember going to talk to Michael Klesch afterwards and pleading with him. Somehow I got a spot and I thank Michael for that and for so many other things in my career. This is where I first met Tom Hannon, Jim Prime, Donnie Van Doren, Peggy Twiggs, Denise Bonfiglio, and especially Mark Sylvester and the one and only George Zingali. George was so infectious, and he made us feel like what we were part of was bigger than life. He taught me about art, and about honesty, and about working really hard. It was also during this time that I learned how to write drill. With my friend Trevor Gingrich, we would practice all day with the cadets, which meant hours and hours and hours, and then stay up all night, sketching out the sets that George had created, competing with each other to come up with the best, prettiest looking pages. Um, I also remember Mark Sylvester at this time. He would go from set to set, and what he made in between there is where all the art lied and it was amazing and affected me to this day. During my time with the Ventures, I was able to work with some amazing mentors, including Jim Prime, Michael Klesch, Bob Morrison, Dave McKinnon, and Dave Phillips. This led me to an offer in 1993 to write Drill for the Star of Indiana. There, I got to work with some amazing mentors, including Jim Prime, Donnie Van Doren, Tom Hannum, Billy Gerberg, and Jim Mason. One of the most amazing things from that year was the united goal that we all had to interpret music in a really honest and artful way. One of the other memories I really have is sitting at the front of the bus with Bill Cook. He would fly in, drive our bus all night, and then fly out to do his next thing. Um, but we would stay up all night and drink coffee and smoke cigarettes, and he would just give me wisdom all the time. I'm so thankful to him for what he's done for me in my life, and uh, also for helping me get a green card. 1993 also offered another first to me, and that's to work with the Winter Guard, Emma Marquis from Boston, Massachusetts. It's here where I began my career-long relationship and friendship with Jim Moore and Greg Lagola. After 1993, Star and I both moved into the theater worlds and began our long road to what became Blast, the theatrical show in 1999. Never in my life did I imagine I would be designing and directing a show that would play on Broadway and other great places all over the world. Blue Coats has been my home since 2013, and I'd like to thank Dave Glasgow for making that happen. 
I would also like to thank my friends and fellow design team for such an incredible journey. And I especially like to thank Mike Scott and Genevieve Geisler for making this organization and the activity better every single year. The cool thing about this whole process is that it's given me a chance to really look back and think uh, about my past and my career. And while the projects have been great and so interesting, it's really the people and the friends and the performers. It's that. Um, and I'm so thankful to have had that. I feel like I'm still in my 20s and I'm just starting this thing, which is crazy because <laughs> I've been doing it for so long. But uh, it feels like every day, every year is a new adventure and something new to explore in this activity. And I'm mostly thankful for that. So thank you again, DCI and the Hall of Fame members and all of you. And to Jim and Greg, let's just keep going. Thank you. John had some great letters of support, but you know the one that put you over the top? The one from Doug Thrower it said, he's Canadian. That's right. That's all, all it took. Well, uh, thank you, everyone. As you can probably see from that, I had a lot more to say. It was hard to, you know, clip it out. As all of you know, the amount of people that affect our lives and allow us to get to this place that we never even imagined, um, it's kind of, it's baffling to be honest with you. This whole weekend, this whole everything is beyond my ability to really grasp right now. Um, I'm thankful. I know I feel. I just don't quite understand how this all happened. Jim Prime and Donnie are here and, and boy, it's just like that's the humble beginnings uh, for me. I'm so thankful that they saw something in me and, you know, and nurtured me for years and years and years in every single project. Man, I, yeah, I'm thankful. Anyways, I don't want to belabor all this, but I thank you so much. Um, and I, I really love this activity and I love these kids and I love what all of you do. And um, I'm just glad that we, you know, we get to do this and have this kind of impact, you know, so thank you for allowing me to be part of all this. Thank you guys.